It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley are here. We've got lots of news about the HoloLens and the new holographic operating system. Plus, it's time to say bye-bye to Gabe Ball, who's taken over. We've got the deets coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 468, recorded Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. Fibonacci sequence. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring with ZipRecruiter.com? You can post to 100 plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidate fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. And by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you fresh, high-quality ingredients to cook delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free with free shipping at blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's, it's like caller ID for your home. Right now, get a free expedited FedEx shipping when you go to ring.com slash www. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with these two stalwarts of the Microsoft industry. Yep. Stalwart One, <laughs> Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com, uh, ZDNet blog, and uh, she's a regular poster there, very busy, constantly updating, breaking stories right and left. <laughs> Stalwart Two, Paul Therott, who's a complete slacker. Yep. No, he actually uh, he keeps writing books, despite uh, evidence that there's no real money in it what do you call negative revenues <laughs> <laughs> he's i'm not a money person but <laughs> <laughs> he is also the man in charge the title head at therot.com <laughs> the ceremonial gesture the the, that is therot.com he's the titular <laughs> head <Yep>. of therot.com <laughs> <laughs> and uh, each week we get together for some laughs some beer, <laughs> some Hadoop, some Call it's of a Duty. Bash. It's a bash. It's a Windows bash. <laughs> did you ever ask, Paul, did you ever get a chance to ask HP what the thinking oh, was behind... I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay. I will do that. Sorry. Yep. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yep. About the, the not using USB 3 for power, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, they do use it for power, but they oh, they require that you use their proprietary uh, right, right, type right, right. C... I mean, Phony Type C adapt power adapter. Well, I mean, it's not phony. So what's it really the, what's is. the name of that thing? Uh, the H. Well, that's the other confusion. You might want to help them with this too, because it's <laughs> called the HP Spectre 13T, but it's not the first HP Spectre 13T. They've been offering them in a variety of right. form factors for some time now. Mm -hmm. So it's conf you know, if you Google HP Spectre 13T, you may or may not find this particular coppery. It is beautiful. By the way, I'm just uh, just for additional information. The HP charger works fine on other Type C devices. Yeah, I, well, it's right. a standard Type C right. adapter. Yeah. Yep. It just doesn't. Uh, the The laptop really wants one that's made by HP. I guess that's the question. Okay. Uh, somebody's saying, "Is this true?" PS Chops, the HP Spectre 13 TVX dot X. That can't be. That's, that's, <laughs> I, that's uh, you know. <laughs> So That's a joke, uh, obviously think. all PCs have like those kind of internal names. Yeah, there's a um, number. HP, to their credit, does not use them on boxes anymore. No, Dell's they don't even. Uh, they don't even put uh, on the back. Yeah. You know, a lot of times Dell and others will put like on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, terrible names like uh, Dell Seventeen Five Thousand. You know, like, right. like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> God, just the trend. A name. It's the trend. I mean, look at Apple. They don't. They don't even. They, they've declined to, to differentiate any of their products now. Soon it's right. just going to be the iPhone, the iPad, and the MacBook, and that's it. You know, that would be nice, actually. <sighs> Hello there. Hello. What's, Hello, Leo. What's new in your world, kids? Um, 
I oh, saw so much. I saw that uh, Microsoft's got something called holographic. Yes, yeah. they do. What is that? How, how clear was this before today? Would you say, Mary Jo? Windows Very holographic. Very unclear. I would say. Is this a version of Windows 10 for holograms? Yeah. So, um, well, let's let's back up a little and okay. say why we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah. um, Computex this week. Big Taipei show going Taipei. on. Right now. A lot of new computers. Right. So Microsoft's big announcement at Computex last night or early this morning was that they're taking this platform they call Windows Holographic and they're going to make it available to other OEMs so they can build devices using it. So Windows Holographic is kind of, I guess I would say, the operating system inside the HoloLens. It's it's a collection of APIs, um, perception APIs, it's Xbox services, it's the shell that people use with the HoloLens. And I, I guess I would say it's the OS itself. So they're, what Microsoft is doing is trying to build a whole ecosystem the way they did with Windows around Windows Holographic. And they say they have a number of companies who've already partnered with them and are going to be building things, um, including a lot of PC makers like Asus and uh, Acer, Dell, HP, and then some device makers too, and chip makers like Qualcomm and Intel and AMD. Um, so it could get very interesting what these companies end up building. We don't really know what they're going to build. I'm a little this. confused, though. I mean, how far right. down does the holographic stack go? I mean, still the Windows so, 10 kernel, right? Or no? I, it's, I, I don't think Microsoft would describe Windows holographic as the OS, although I think I don't think they would. Is. I agree. I well, don't yeah, think I, they I, would, I, but I think we would. <laughs> really? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it, it's hard to know what some of these specialty versions of Windows 10, where things start and where other things end, right? So mm -hmm. when you talk about something like Windows 10, Pro or Windows 10 Home, it's straight. It's straightforward. It's you know, it's Windows, obviously Windows as we know it. The version that runs on, you know, the Xbox One is is very different because that's essentially a, a Hyper V based system. There's a Windows thing going on, but there's also this Xbox thing going on, and you know, they're merging that a little bit more than before and all that stuff. But it's hard to understand where you know, again, things begin and end. Surface Hub, a lot more like a PC, but still different. You know, different kind of implementation, and obviously the HoloLens thing. Is a different implementation too, but I right. I, I feel I read I reread their post today about the announcement, and the way I sort of took it was, you know, Hol Windows 10 is the uh, is still the operating system, I guess, but Windows Holographic is now a part of Windows 10 as sort of like um, a subsystem of Windows 10, <laughs> and I that know. on the hologram it, on the hologram oh, sorry the Hololens it's the thing that is the prominent personality obviously it's the, it is it becomes like you said there's a shell and that becomes the user interface that people interact with um but i i took this to mean that windows holographic would be available uh, via windows other versions of windows 10 and that you know mm -hmm. people could do vr plus ar mixed reality solutions based on you know pcs based on other devices um mm -hmm. down the road so it's it's a little yeah. confusing it is. So I, I went back, because Paul and I talked about this on Twitter today, and um, we both were confused about it. And so I, I went back yeah. and looked at one of the original Alex Kipman videos when HoloLens was announced. Yeah. And here's what he said. He said, um, the devices running Windows 10, all the APIs for human and environmental understanding are part of Windows. And this version of Windows that we put on this device, meaning HoloLens, yeah. we call it Windows holographic. There you go. So, yeah. Hmm. But but then that begs the question, okay, what is Dell doing with Windows holographic? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, are they building a, a VR headset or are they just somehow going to build computers that can connect to other VR headsets that use Windows holographic yeah. well, I inside I think this is them. what's encouraging is it probably means you, there'll be a variety. This is going to be yeah. an ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. And so right. Dell might do that. Uh, right. uh, you know, HP might build a backpack. Um, right. oh, no. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Another I mean, backpack. Uh, yeah, I mean, but that, but I think that's good. That's actually no, really great. That's, that's what you absolutely want. absolutely true. Yeah. I think you could also yeah. infer something about the HoloLens itself because one of the big concerns about HoloLens is it's, unready state for consumers um you know there isn't a lot going on in the app space yet but why would there be it just came out and develop you know a developer preview forum 
Um, the device is fairly complex, I think, for a typical consumer to kind of, you know, take out of the box and just use. It's not a simple thing. Uh, and it's also very expensive. Um, I think when you look at that $3,000 price, that's not Microsoft trying to make a couple bucks off the thing. That's, you know, right. them covering their costs. It's an expensive yeah. device. And so, uh, you know, one of the questions we had had all along, I mean, since last January was, well, you know, when will this thing be suitable for consumers? And I think the answer might actually be never. Mm. That hmm. they're going to do what they do with PCs and what they do with phones. And they're going to rely on the ecosystem of partners that they have to take their technology and deploy it in different ways to different markets, some of which will be consumer facing. I kind of think that. And then I kind of went back and forth because in the blog post where they talk about yesterday's announcement, mm -hmm. they say, the way right. you should think about HoloLens is it's like Surface. And the way that the Surface device family is our category creator type device, that's what HoloLens is for yep. these kind of headsets. But if you follow that metaphor all the way, it means Microsoft will build it for consumers too, right? It just will be the it, highest priced. Yeah. If it's nice literally the same, device. yeah. Or the I, reference so I, I, design. <clears throat> I noted right, that as, uh, as well, and I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but Surface devices are premium devices, and they're very expensive, and most people cannot afford them. And I think that's right. going to be even more dramatic with the Hollands, and certainly it would be if it retains the current pricing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, like, but they, you know, something interesting. With, with Hololens, they have explicitly come out and said, we are licensing, licensing this technology to others. Here are here's a list of them, and there there are others we don't know about. These companies will produce products, hardware devices, and uh, mm -hmm. hardware software combinations that are, are not ours, you know, that are, that are theirs, but use Windows holographic, some combination of VR and AR technologies, mm -hmm. and they're doing it explicitly. With with Surface, we've seen something very interesting. Where at first it wasn't clear, but I would say as of this Computex, I think it was Asus who released what is obviously an exact duplicate of a Surface device. And it is mm -hmm. the 10th the or so of such devices in the market. Microsoft is at least implicitly, and I believe explicitly, allowing its hardware partners to copy this design and th that they are literally allowing it because, they, right. th because it's better for the ecosystem as a whole if these device types take off in any way because the PC market isn't doing so well right now. That... They don't actually care if Surface sales suffer because HP and Dell and Asus and Acer and every other company on earth is making something that looks exactly like it. Most of them selling for much less money. Yeah, true. I think, right? though, you could make a case, too, that Microsoft says, you know what, there is going to be a group of people, maybe business people only, mm -hmm who are willing to pay $3,000 or $4,000 for a really premium uh, sure. HoloLens headset. And that's kind of like what the Surface Book is, right? It's like the premium yeah. PC. So you could say they will make a premium device, maybe just for businesses, since Microsoft is kind of veering towards the business market with, with this device. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, yeah. Yeah, we don't. We just don't know if that what the plan the, is. The, there. the the announcement is delightfully vague. It is. <laughs> but, but how this stuff is going to work? Yeah. I mean, well, I, you know where some of the know. confusion comes from is we don't even know what Microsoft is as a company anymore. I mean, they're confused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they suddenly make PC hardware, so that that's a right. whole. Are they uh, so, so? If this were of Microsoft of five years ago. Of course, holographic is an operating system. That's where Microsoft makes its money. They're selling, uh, you know, it's a, it is an OEM operating system. But we don't know. Is What is Microsoft's so, business? I don't know. Are they a hardware yeah. company? What are they? Yeah, I, they're, uh, right. What I, yeah, what, it's like an MST what? joke. You know, what am I? Um, <laughs> it's, it is very, it's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, you know, in other words, Microsoft has a surface business. It's doing better than it did before. I don't ever think it's going to be a major revenue generation machine for the company like some of its bigger products. But hopefully it's profitable and all that stuff. But I, I really still think that the point of it is to be aspirational, that for so many years, PC makers weren't doing the right thing by Windows. And this goes back, I mean, forever. Remember the, the first-gen HP Media Center PC that came out in 2002? It was just a tower PC. You know, and Microsoft over the years has begged them, has worked with companies like HP to come out with, I think it was Athena, sort of a, a PC concept during the Longhorn days. They've done all this stuff where they work with PC. You know, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. And then these guys just do the same thing over and over again. And I think with Surface, they're like, okay, look, this is what we're talking about. We're going to sell this now because you're not doing it. 
Um, and they've, I don't know if inspiration is the right word, but they've inspired uh, these partners now to finally go down this path. And, you know, they, they, it's worked, I guess. And so right. they're even they encouraging to them to copy them. Right. I mean, it's it like a lot so, of people yeah. say, "Ooh, look, this is, it yeah. copies the surface. I think Microsoft wants people to copy the surface. That's what I mean. I think I think so, too. Yeah. In other words, they haven't come out and said it. But these designs are so bald facedly copies of the surface. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. it's just, it's like some of them are pathetic. And like the one that came out, the Asus they announced this week, like seriously. I mean, it's it's <laughs> literally, they, they have slightly different names for everything. You know, it has like the hinge that can go back any, you know, any degree. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have notches in it or whatever. So they have a different term for it, but it's exactly like the Surface Pro hinge. I mean, it's just, it's at some point it's like, seriously? I mean, it can't be, you can't yeah. just copy stuff like that. Like it's not one company doing it. It's basically every PC maker has a, Surface clone now, so it must yeah. be a thing. It must be an agreement of some mm -hmm. kind, you know. Yeah. Find it intriguing it. that nobody's copying the Surface Book hinge. Uh, yeah. Well, I, by the way, that's <laughs> I like the me. Surface Book. Hinge. Nobody's copying. Look at this. I, I just like got a it. case that makes this thing look <laughs> like the Terminator. Uh, <laughs> look, I, you know what? The, the, I look. I've said this many times about Surface Book. It's a beautiful machine. I love the screen, the size of it, and all that kind of stuff. That stupid teardrop hole in there is dumb. The putting um, computer behind the screen and making that thing top heavy so you can't put it back to a wider degree is dumb. You know, when they said people were, you know, people have been asking us, when are you going to make a laptop? When are you going to make a laptop? <laughs> Nobody asked you for a laptop. What they wanted was an ultra book. They want thin and light. They wanted something that wasn't top heavy that nobody needs to take the stupid screen off. Like this is just, mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful and it's engineered nicely for what it is. That hinge is incredible in the same way that, I don't know, like a World War One tank was kind of incredible at the time. But <laughs> it doesn't, I don't think that represents any form of mainstream anything. Like I just, it's interesting and it's a nice computer, you know, powerful specs and all that stuff is expensive, well made. But I don't know, there's any number of, you know, think pads or high end HPs or whatever that are thinner and lighter and just as powerful and by the way, they don't heat up my bag when I use them. You know, I, I, I don't know. I'm not actually down on Surface Book per se, but I just, I don't, I don't quite get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing we, we know after Computex, going back to what they, we do and don't know, is Microsoft ha is, has scheduled an event, well, actually two events in China at the very beginning of November where they're inviting their OEMs and ODM partners to come and hear how they're going to enable them to take advantage of Windows Holographic with their own devices. So that means they're going to get their marching orders there and learn all about the platform. So the first possible <laughs> devices that we'll see using this from the third parties, I'm guessing will be next year at best. That's I've seen Microsoft. Saying. Yeah, they've been quoted saying today saying, this is not something years away. It's months away. Okay, it's months away, but it's definitely months. next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. It's 16 next is a number of months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, by so the that, way, we don't know what's going to happen. Interesting. Right. I think we're going to see a similar forward uh, leaning announcement from Xbox in a couple of weeks, right? So, in other words, mm -hmm. we'll probably see some Xbox hardware this year, but I think the most exciting VR, 4K thing, whatever, is also going to be months away, meaning next year. You know, that. Um, they're in this case, I think you're looking a little further out. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're if you're a developer for Microsoft now, and you hear this, this is really good news for you, right? Because mm -hmm. the pitch on Windows 10 is Windows 10 everywhere means one store everywhere. So this yep. will give more devices that same store in terms of other people who who kind of join the join the group. You have the same set of services, same store, same core of Windows 10, though, like we just said at the beginning, not the exact same Windows 10 that's on PCs or phones, but but at least the same core, you know, the whole one core idea. Uh, same mm -hmm. set of developer tools, like you use Visual Studio, you use Unity to build apps for the HoloLens also. Uh, right. So that for developers, this is a really good thing if Microsoft can get it to fly and get people to join, join in. The, the other thing, we sort of need to address here is this uh, there's been an evolving use of language to describe what these experiences are in HoloLens. Yeah. Right? In the beginning, it was augmented reality or mm -hmm. AR. And I remember, Leo, you and I had had a conversation at some point about 
some potential uses for this thing. And, and, and at least a few times, I think you said something to the effect of, but that is what you're describing as virtual reality. Right, you know? right, right. And, and I'm sorry I was so mean. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, the, <laughs> no. I, I think actually Microsoft is addressing this because I, I have I, the way I look at Hololens is like it. It seems like a fairly limited set of use cases compared to virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And the thing, the, I think the point that you were making at the time was that some combination of virtual reality and what Microsoft was then calling augmented reality would in fact be kind of interesting. In other words. You have a VR environment that's that Paris Cafe thing I keep talking about. But that's maybe VR, there's a VR, right. That's right. VR. But maybe there's elements in the room that you can interact with that are holograms, and that's AR. Right. But now what we're calling this full experience is what Microsoft calls mixed reality. Mm -hmm. and, Which I think is very interesting. Yeah. And yeah. I, I and this is actually kind of how they're this is interesting because it goes back to the kind of embrace and extend stuff that Microsoft is so infamous for, in that VR seems like it has more potential as a mainstream kind of computing platform that a lot of people are doing VR. You don't see anyone really doing AR except for Microsoft and a few, you know, niche kind of things that companies no one's ever really heard of. But Microsoft is positioning its this mixed reality platform based on Windows in conjunction with some VR solution from whoever, HTC Vive, you know, Oculus Rift, whatever, as like a, like a superset of virtual reality, that this is the premium experience, you know, and that by mixing uh, what we used to call AR uh, with VR and, and essentially, essentially creating something called mixed reality, that this is going to be the best experience. And they've, they've been kind of moving toward this mixed reality language over time. But mm -hmm. I think with this Computex announcement, they have clarified the questions we had around, well, is Microsoft doing VR? Uh, themselves? Right. And at least on the PC kind of haul inside, the answer is kind of no. I mean, we might see uh, something different from Xbox because that's an all-in-one you know, console type appliance uh, solution. But um, for PC type solutions where you would typically go a VR route, what Microsoft is saying is you can have VR, but you can do everything and have a, have mixed reality as well. And it mm -hmm. seems like that's part of this broader platform they're talking about. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. And I think it's a good platform. You know, I was we talked on uh, Twit on Sunday about an article mm -hmm. in, it was on Quora, but it was by a guy who had worked for years with the Air Force, with the military, on flight simulators. And he said there's a real issue that nobody in the VR industry is acknowledging with sim sickness. And he said even the the Air Force, there, and he quoted an Air Force study mm -hmm. uh, from years ago, but of course he said the big difference between today's VR and the VR of 30 years ago is it cost a million dollars to do it 30 years ago. <laughs> sure. And right. today it's cheap. You were in a box that was up on a thing yeah. that was shaking around. So only know, the military it? did it. But it was <laughs> it's cheaper today and maybe not even quite as good in terms of, you know, latency yeah. and resolution. Um, so it's cons it's a consumer-grade thing. He said, but the problems are not going to get better, which is this issue of it's the same problem you have with 3D where your eyes converge. There's two ways you can tell distance. One is eye, your eye muscles. You know, like if you got a butterfly in your nose and your, mm -hmm. your eye muscles are mm -hmm. crossing, that you know it's very close. So convergence is one and the focus mechanism uh, is another. And uh, uh, it, he says when there's a massive disagreement, when, yeah. your, uh, when your my, mind is saying, well, it, you know, my, my, my convergence mechanism says it's three feet away, but my focus mechanism says it's six feet away, the caveman mind says, oh, you're hallucinating. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Throw up whatever it is you ate is making you <laughs> sick. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And uh, he said, that's <laughs> biology. You can't get yeah. around that by lowering latency and increasing resolution. Mm -hmm. That's biology. And he said, there's a secondary thing, which the Air Force study, that's a percentage, around 10% of everybody uses VR, suffers long-term disorientation for as much as a day. Not merely nausea. Some people won't ever be nauseated. Some it's will. like having food poisoning. But some people will, and the Air Force recommends after you have been in a simulator, to, to wait 24 hours before fly, before flying a plane or driving a car. Yikes! Because <laughs> you're <laughs> drunk, you 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 yeah. you're disconnected, and you're dangerous behind the wheel. Wow. So uh, I say all wow. this only to say whether it's true or not. Yeah. Microsoft dodges a little bit of a bullet because. 
The mixed have reality doesn't have that problem because <laughs> yeah, you're looking yeah, yeah. at stuff in the real world at the same time as right. you superimpose stuff, and it makes sense to your mind. When you're looking at that Minecraft sim on a coffee table, your eyes are telling you it's six feet away, and your right. and your muscles are telling you it's six. Everything can is an agreement. So I think right. mixed reality may have not only more utility, but a better future just from pure comfort. It certainly has more utility than pure AR, as we AR's, used to call it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I you know, I, I you kind of have to wonder, you know, and the answer is actually really simple, but, you know, why would Microsoft go down this AR route when the whole world is going VR? And the answer is, I think Microsoft ha had AR resources and the whole world was going down the VR route. So, you know, how were they ever going right. to make a difference? And so right. this was this was something I think that worked out. It's 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 very exciting technology. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It has, very, you know, I love you limitations. It's just farther you know. out than VR is. Yeah. yeah and I think yeah. today it has far fewer real world applications in the sense that sitting in a virtual Paris cafe and not drinking coffee is a right. <laughs> real world situation. <laughs> Um, I, 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 well, one other cool thing they did say, though, is one of the things they're going to enable is people who are using VR headsets and AR headsets to be able to communicate with each other through the Windows holographic platform. That's potentially kind of interesting. And they have this, um, it's totally a concept video on their site showing yeah, another one. what it would look like if you combine these worlds, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you want to show the video or not, but... Um, yeah. It, it gives me, you a kind of, it it's way futuristic, but it gives you a sense of what it would look like if you had some people yeah. using VR, some using AR. I think, together. by the way, it's kind of a bad sign that they always make videos like this that are way futuristic. Yeah. Like, this is kind of yeah. part of the problem. Um, and they Although, also, you know, you know it's, again, it's like they inspirational never don't show, too. Right? No, I know. But, you know, the, the <laughs> I, I always harp on the focus, uh, oh, I'm sorry, on the field of view thing because. Oh, it's on, um, wait, it's on um, blogs.windows. No, that's blogs not. Blogs.windows.com. Oh, well, I want to watch this for a while. Top. I like this. <laughs> He's painting a rocket ship. No, we've already seen this is the old HoloLens one, right? Yeah. All right, let me uh, let me go and find something else. It's yeah. on It's on it's your on, site? It's on my site, too. I, I embedded yeah. the video. Okay, I went to the, um, I just went to whatever I found. Yeah, it's meant to be inspirational. You know, you know how they used to do these for office? They call them envisioning videos where yeah. it's, it's yep. a mix of some things that are nearer term and some are further away, but kind of gives you thoughts about where you could go with it. Okay. Like one thing in the video I noticed is um, they show that ah, heliportation thing. This is the world of enabling a world of mixed reality. Is that it? Yeah. Am I in the yeah, right that's one? It. Okay. That's it. Here she goes. <laughs> She's got little strange little mouse ear buns. I always mm. yep, wonder about that hairstyle. She's looking in her purse. She's pulling out a, a HoloLens. And now she's in her warehouse. But it's not just any warehouse. She's styling it. Right? right. It's not like a virtual showroom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's oh, so she's like make, putting her store in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so she's kind of envisioning what this empty room would look like with her displays. And she seems very unhappy at some point. But, oh, she threw it all away. Stupid HoloLens. Oh, now here comes Bob. <laughs> <laughs> We're so not ready. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Bob is arrived. But the client is on an earlier flight. <laughs> We're so not ready. She's such a good actress because I actually believe not yet. that there's Just a blob. Just bring the team in, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Now, 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 Joey's wearing his Vive. By the way, this is a Vive. I can see you're hard at work, Samir. But Penny needs your help. Yeah, sure thing. Just let me check out this bunker real quick. Samir, the plan is on. As per usual, your sense of timing is just awesome. That is one of the most horrifying things Anywhere I've ever seen in a video. You must be <laughs> so. Some people are wearing Microsoft stuff. Some aren't. Some are. This is that. This is that mixed reality, you know, thing in a way, right? We're I mean, all exactly. one. Penny? Hi. He's beaming in. Cute. I try. So, um, it's coming. It's not. Wow. I don't this see this the as a future store. at it's gotta all. Be, it's got to be unforgettable. Yeah. Not exactly blowing my hair back. Yeah, the space is driving me nuts. All right. How about a change of scenery? It is, after all, a big rectangle. Welcome to Think Club. Oh, now they're in Think Club? <laughs> it's a disco for thinkers. You know, the first rule of Think Club. <laughs> don't talk about Just it. Just don't think about don't Think think about it. No. I like, you know he's a designer because he's wearing an infinity scarf, by the way. That's yep. how you can tell. <laughs> it's not French. 
I like these poorly rendered uh, visions. I just don't want this to be the future. I'm sorry. I know. Got no interest in this. Um, unfortunately, all the people listening are only hearing bad yeah, music. Yeah, they're hearing so, terrible uh, yeah. music. Yeah. Um, Basically, they, they're just creating a virtual environment inside of a real environment, and then they're going to try to sell it to this corporate suit that's walking in the door. Yeah. Right. Who's who's doing real-time translation language translations oh. because she speaks a different language. That's cool. And now yep. they've made their store Naifu. Apparently, uh, North Korea has taken over the United States. <laughs> and so. they're banana stairs. So that's cool. Yep. If you could have stairs made out of bananas, that's what it would look <laughs> Here's like. Here's another thing, by the way. If you're going to have like a virtual representation of stairs, they would look like finished stairs, not like drawings. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't understand why it has to, like, I, we get that it's a concept, but yeah. it's a little too uh, forced, I think. Anyway, the one, she loved the one thing it. I noticed was it. They fist bumps. the hollow portation thing. Remember, we we all wrote about this a couple months back, where Microsoft Research is actually doing work on hollow portation, where you could be interacting with somebody in your room who's a hologram. Yeah, and sure. this is one of those that. things in that video. Yeah, it's like that. interacting with my teenage son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only he's not quite as lifelike, <laughs> except that he can like chest bump me, and he actually knocks me over. <laughs> 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 Um, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of positioning for power in the threat household right now. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> jockeying would be the yeah. yeah. I you know this that little virtual world reminded me of something from seriously like 25 years ago when this Microsoft could have been a Bill had, Gates keynote at at Comdex. No, it was like a uh, Microsoft used to do these uh, satellite broadcast to movie theaters of events, right? Because back before the internet had broadband or whatever, that was how you could communicate. And it, it might have been like one of the first Joe Belfiore things I ever saw, but it was a uh, like an IE event, like web event, early IE, maybe first, second version, whatever it was. And they talked about a, it was a virtual environment for chat, like that looked a little bit like that, except, you know, 1990s technology. And the idea is you'd, you'd kind of float around a, a world that was rendered like that and you could hear wind blowing and you could talk to people. And I remember talking, it was a guy from either Norway or Sweden. And back in 1996-ish or whatever, whenever this was, 95, 90, whatever it was, um, this was super impressive, you know? Um, in the world of the future, this is not impressive in the slightest. And <laughs> it's weird, like like that thing, that world. They were if you were going to beam to some virtual world, it would look perfect. It would be, it would be real. You know, it wouldn't be like a cartoon land. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think this yeah. video is going to seem quaint to the people of the near future. Yeah, maybe, or maybe they make it look it seems kind quaint of quaint now because it's <laughs> VR, right? <laughs> like, isn't sure. that meant to show like VR versus AR? In a way. Yeah, because, oh, you know what? That's the subtext of this. Oh, right. You want to play dopey games and look like yeah. a bozo? Like, kind of. Play yeah. with your right. life. You want to work? That could be. Right. That's yeah, what but the even, subtext Yeah, but even those AR, uh, like the, the stair, the banana stairs, I mean, they were, yeah. they had like overdraw lines, like as yeah. if they were drawings. Right. You know, I mean, they were themselves not realistic looking. Mm. It's a little strange. Yeah. Okay. Still a pretty interesting uh, little development. The future. <laughs> Hang on yeah. to your helmets. Future is now. The future is now. <laughs> By the way, Very if I had a developer sense. kit, I would be getting an update, right, to my HoloLens? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anything important or just, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, to HoloLens users, um, certainly. Um, I, I was talking to Raphael about this briefly, um, and he was sort of pushing the notion that with this release... Microsoft has aligned the builds of Windows 10 that are on this device, you know, for PC and for mobile. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the, the build numbers kind of line up, although that's going to go out the door tonight when a new build comes out for PCs or whenever that happens. But um, lots of improvements to Edge, lot, some input improvements. You can use normal key, uh, Bluetooth accessories like mouse and keyboard. Um, new uh, voice commands, you know, better multitasking. You can run up to three it's funny, they call them like flat applications, flat apps yeah. is a term I've never heard before. Um, in another post, they referred to them as universal Windows platform apps, but, you know, like Hull, let's call them HoloLens apps. Um, you know, you can take screenshots and share them. You can play Groove Music in there now. Um, you know, the video player is more sophisticated and so forth. There's a bunch of just fit and finish kind of stuff, I, I would say, from the there, 
There was a funny sentence in the in the post about it, though. They said, and don't worry, your holograms will be just where you left them. <laughs> they said that? Did you see that? Yay. Yeah, they did. No. All right, that's good. <laughs> I like a company that can laugh at itself. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> um, okay. It's the surface we already talked about. When heck do we mention it's coming? Yeah, that's first okay. week of, of um, November. November. Okay. And that's, that's a the hardware reason. show. I thought they, no, did, did, did they it, stop doing it? Did away with it? Yeah. They they kind of remade yeah. WenHeck a couple of years ago into more uh, regional focus shows. I think that's they've right. only been that's in right. Asia so okay. far. Right. I think they're, the point of them is that they're always where stuff is made. Uh, yes. I think well, that that's part of the point. And yeah. I suppose for their partners, not only are they... Do they have offices there and so forth? But this is an opportunity. They're, you know, they can go to China anyway. And so this makes it less onerous for them to go someplace because it's a place they had to do business in and, it, you know, they can combine trips and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And all their OEMs and ODMs are there. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Continuing on. Shall we? Or let's, I, you sure. know what I would like to do is uh, I'm just looking at the, Rundown. Let's take a break. This would be a good time to take a break, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Okay. And continue on. Coming up, Computex. I, I want to talk about anything, any new hardware you saw there you might be excited about. First, a word from our sponsor, Zip Recruiter. If you're the hiring manager, the person in charge, the one doing the heavy lifting of getting the employees in, you know that's an important job. And I'm not just blowing smoke. This is a this is this is what makes or breaks a company. A company is made of people, the right people. You know, things are going great. And you know the right ones out there. The question is, how do you find the right one? Which board, which job board, where, you know, what site are they where are the where's the resume? Where how do you get to them? ZipRecruiter simplifies that. One post on ZipRecruiter goes to 100 plus job boards. 100 plus including Facebook and Twitter and Google plus everywhere. The idea is you want to you want to be wherever that right person, the the perfect employee is living in any city, any industry, nationwide. And I'll tell you, a lot of a lot of employees these days are on mobile. So ZipRecruiter works great on desktop, but it also works great on mobile. They can even use the ZipRecruiter's unique mobile uh, apply process to actually do the whole thing on their phone. And if you if you're looking for you know sharp technical young people. That's how they want to do it. You post on ZipRecruiter. Those uh, those job applications don't come into your inbox or your phone. They're not calling you. They, it's all in the ZipRecruiter interface where you can go there. You'll It'll be populated quickly because they have 6 million resumes. They'll match it against those instantly. Those are people going to ZipRecruiter looking for work. And then you're going to start getting more and more. You can screen them quickly. They eliminate people that just, you know, they don't have the skills or they're not the right type or they don't. Whatever, you know. And then you put stars next to the ones you like and you rank them and pick the right person fast. And it could be just a day or two before you've got that job filled with exactly the right person. Screen candidates with real-world questions, too, using free-form, multiple-choice, or yes-or-no formats. So you, the screening is you're doing it. You can view the responses in conjunction with their resumes, all nicely formatted. It makes it very easy. Over 800,000 businesses now use ZipRecruiter. More than 100 million candidate applications have been processed. This is a superb way to find the perfect next employee for your company. Try it free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. That lets, does two things. Gets you free four-day trial. Lets them know you heard it on Windows Weekly. And that's good for us. So please, win, if you do it, ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. You ought to do it. It is the best way to hire. And if you're not the person in charge of hiring at your company, maybe as in my case, it's your wife, <laughs> tell her. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. I actually got an invitation to go to Taiwan for Computex from the Computex folks. They said, we'll, we'll fly hmm. out. We'll pay, wow. we'll pay everything. Hmm. And I would have loved to have gone. And I, I, you know, I don't normally do junkets, but I figure if it comes from the conference organizers as opposed to Acer yep. or somebody, yeah, that's probably not a conflict of interest. Um, but I just didn't feel I could leave you guys behind. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I would have dropped you like a bad habit. But that's nice. So no, I'm. I was uh, really honored. And yeah. I and, and oh, that's nice. Have you ever been either of you? No. Mm -mm. I think it looks been, really. I mean, interesting. I could have gone. I like you know. Sure. The, 
just but I'd, I'd have to figure it's it out a long myself. Flight like, and it's a, yeah, you know I, I mean it's not a trivial matter. No. 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 Um, no, let me tell you something. If I sit in an audience at an Acer or Asus event and they pop out yet another two in one PC, I'm gonna I'm not gonna be feeling too good about the twenty eight hours I just spent in the air. Right. You know, to go right. see something like that. Did you but, see any have you seen in the reporting uh, anything that looks like it would have been worth? No, not the travel. No. But I mean yeah. it, this is interesting stuff it's and the not same so stuff, stuff, right? right? It's new PCs. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of attention paid to those backpack PCs, those silly yeah. little Yeah. A stupid okay. headlines it's around that stuff. It's a laptop in a backpack, right? Sure, right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's for it. VR, right? So that makes it, uh, yeah. you know, and it, and it, and it's call it VR busters. <laughs> <laughs> it's sufficient to. Uh, the good news is, it's sufficient to uh, run um, a Vive or an Oculus Rift, which is not mm -hmm. an insignificant amount of horsepower. Yeah, it gives you that untethered experience, I guess. Yeah, if yeah. you have a ten-pound backpack, slightly less tethered yeah. experience in, whatever, yeah. in your universe. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I, there was a um, there was an Asus MacBook clone that I thought was you know nice looking, but I also kind of despise the fact that that's all we do in the PC industry is copy what Apple does. Yeah, um, oh. yeah. I saw that Asus, and that looks beautiful. And it's you know I yep. think I'm actually very happy with the HP. I think that this. Oh, and and by the way, kudos to HP for that design because yep. you may like it or love it or not like it, but it is at least it's unique. A, it's in the category. You know, if you're looking, yeah. it's an executive product. If you're looking for yeah. a stylish, but it doesn't copy something. No. Outright, you know. I and see I think Anna Wintour using this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Paul, right. Paul, Paul, I don't know if he knows he's who she is, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> editor. Of, Vogue, yeah. P interest. P interest. P interest. Yes. P interest uh, yeah. Uh, so it's styling. I like seeing some. What I like is I like the diversity of the PC ecosystem. It's, right. It's remarkable. No, that's what always was the big selling point, right? It was you have choice. Yeah. That's, so if yeah. you want a Mac style product, that's fine, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Intel uh, came out with the their their fastest ever desktop processor. That's kind of interesting. Seventeen hundred bucks, kind of expensive. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the new. Uh, this is weird because it's Broadwell based, right? This new. Um, it's a I think Xeon. it is. Is it Broadwell based? It's the previous gen. It's not Skylake, so it must be. It's not is that Haswell Broadwell either? It's Broadwell. It's yeah. Broadwell. So the previous gen was Haswell based. Right. And the, actually, the pricing isn't all that different. In fact, the capabilities aren't all that different. But the, you know, various process. You know, say, I think the PCI lanes are the same. The number of cores might have gone up slightly. Um, These are the anyway. extreme editions. They're, they're, you know, yeah, the Broadwell, big, big, big. I don't know if this is the Broadwell stuff. I think uh, it is. I think you might be right about Broadwell. It's not yeah. Skylink. Yeah. But that's, it's, but it's for that market. It's for the server market, uh, the, the, you know, the well, people. Or enthusiast market, enthusi you know, people that want to yeah. the clock, yeah. go nuts. Yeah. Um, AMD talked about a future gen of chips that are coming out, I think, late, late this year that will hopefully compete with the high-end Intel stuff for the first time in years. But the stuff they actually showed off the show was... You know, low-end mobile uh, yeah. processors, which are you know okay, but also what I think it was two, was it two or three hundred dollars? I've just forgotten. But a two or three hundred dollar VR capable graphics card, which is actually very oh, interesting. That's interesting. Those those graphic mm -hmm. cards tend to cost five, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, so we'll see how that works. But uh, I don't know. From the you know machine, the Dell stuff was uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't see anything. It's not like, it's super, super inspiring, is it? Yeah, no, so, yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, what's the market now? It's, it's it's the beginning of June, right? So this is back-to-school stuff, right? So, or I stuff that is I, just... I like seeing more convertibles. This is a, something Intel's yeah. pushing. Remember, they bought actually bought ads on our mm -hmm. network for the two-in-ones for the right, right. the Intel platform. And I, I think... Yeah, Dell came out with a 17-inch two-in-one, which I think is the first of that size. Wow, that's big. Um, yeah. That's a big-ass tablet right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. When you use it that way, um, how do you even then, carry a 17 inch? I know, I know. I can barely know? fit a 17 inch machine in my I bag. Can't, so. I can hardly lift this thing. <laughs> yes. I know. See, compare this is the 17 yeah. inch I just got. Uh, it's a it's Linux like a surfboard, machine, and it's desktop class. And this is the compare that to yeah. the HP. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, like <laughs> two of those would basically be the screen. Yeah, it's like Baby Bear and Papa Bear. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just uh, quite a quite a difference and by the way you'll be gratified to know uh, paul that i've actually hosed the linux machine already so uh, <laughs> i'm delighted to hear that. didn't didn't take long uh 
it's, sure. Yeah. So I, as it I, turns out, when you can access anything in the, you, you, know, you in the can system. you can screw it up pretty good. It's just sitting there with this kind of uh, unhappy uh, mm. glow to it, purple glow to it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It says I don't I don't want to do whatever it is you asked me to do today. <sighs> but it's big. Can't fold over <laughs> the lid. You might be tempted to. It is. It is yeah. big. Yes. It is. It is big. Zen books. I like the Asus uh, Zen books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and that they were kind of the original uh, PC Ultra book in many ways. Yeah. Um, you have the uh, have, Acer have S7, one. right, Mary Jo? I you, do, but I used to have... You'd be a natural for this, right? Yeah, I used to have a, an Asus before I had this. Yeah, I have, like an Asus, I have the first gen Asus, and it has that same circular pattern on the lid. It's at least four processor generations old now. Um, but, the, you know, again, but it was a MacBook Air clone. This, you know? this looks so and, much yeah. like the MacBook. Yeah, and this one. And by it's the way, stunning. it looks like the MacBook to the point of it has one USB-C. It's confusing. <laughs> like, oh, what? Yeah. It's confusing. Why? This looks <laughs> just like a MacBook. It's too bad. <laughs> That's called slavish copying. Yeah. Wow. Well. Or as they described it, I believe, as the most prestigious laptop ever made. <laughs> I like I like your uh, tags tagged with Apple, Mac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, all right. It's, you know, sorry guys, that's that's no. what that is. And uh, fingerprint scanning wearables. This so Microsoft had a. Did they have a, they have a booth or they have a presence? No, they had a keynote. Uh, they they do their keynote. own press, press okay. conference or whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, by the way, related to this is I, I, I wanted to write about this today, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. Microsoft is going down this route where you can use different devices to log into your PC, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of a neat way to do two-factor. And uh, they have a new version of the Microsoft Authenticator app coming out, at least for Windows 10 Mobile, I assume for other uh, platforms as well that will allow you using Bluetooth to automatically sign into your PC when you get close to it. Um, and what that is describing is a similar system except using a, a wearable device um, that again, you know, you would have on your person and it would just um, help this thing sign in for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, I mean, this is where they announced, this is Zenbo. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, robot from the Pixar movie? Yeah. Zembo.com. Uh, okay. Uh. I, I I have so little respect for this type of thing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's something about... Uh, Zenbo, bring me some more tequila. Yeah, fast. <laughs> Zenbo. Wow. Uh, it's, a, it's cheap, though. It's only uh, what, sure. 600 bucks. It looks like it's about as high quality as that little robot that used to come with the Nintendo Entertainment System and, <laughs> you know, would move like the little blocks around Zenbo. on its hand. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's possible with Zenbo. <laughs> um, everything. Everything. Mm. What else? What else? I mean, that's pretty much most that's, of Computex. That's it. Well, you know what? I'm glad I didn't fly to uh, China. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I mean, I would do it just to go to Taipei. I mean, yeah, just I mean. To, I'd go for the guy bow and, and stay for the Zenbo. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like I missed a lot. It's like when people say, like, you know, you should go to Mobile World Congress, which is in Barcelona. And that's hilarious. And I would probably spend seven or eight minutes at the show. Right. But then I would go running <laughs> out the door. I'd never see me again. <laughs> I'd be in some cam infused yeah. coma somewhere <laughs> out in the city because there's no way I'm going to that place and not seeing that place. You know? Yep. Um, here we go. Get ready. We're going down the chute yep. to anniversary mode, anniversary land. So <laughs> this is about a week. <laughs> this is from late last week, I think. Yeah. Um, and by the way, it may be any minute now, any day now, whatever, there'll be another build. But uh, they released a new build of Windows 10 inside a preview for PCs. And, you know, it's... More of the kind of, you know, updates we've been seeing and some cool stuff. Um, the biggest of which, of course, is the fix for the File Explorer icon, which was going to ruin Windows 10, and now they fixed it. <laughs> so thank God for that. Um, that icon is yellow again, as God intended. <laughs> and it's not 
weight, which was terrible. Uh, and then most of the rest of it's not, you know, super, you know, some Cortana features, sticky note improvements. Um, they added a compass to the middle of that Windows Inc. ruler. So as you, you know, position it, you'll get the exact oh, nice. orientation. That's nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> More of that stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, that stuff. Yeah. Oh, and one of the things that's enabled, too, which didn't get a lot of um, coverage or even a mention in Microsoft's blog post is this is the first build where you can try out the Windows 10 containers. This is the first build where you can try out Windows 10 containers. So they actually built containers into the client. They're building them into the client with the anniversary update uh, for enterprise only, I think. Uh, right. But yeah, right. you can now start testing those if you're one of those container nuts. <laughs> That's there. I'm trying to think that if there was anything else. Just more like we're, we're getting close to when they're probably going to RTM this thing. So there aren't a ton of new features so in these months, builds. We're 60 days off there. About we're getting close. Right? Yeah. yeah. 59 days. Uh, yeah. It's really not that far away. It's June all of a sudden, 1st. It's, it's going to be July 29th, end of July. I mean, assuming they're on schedule and I have heard nothing to suggest they aren't. It's not like right. the old days where you needed months or weeks or whatever. But yeah. I mean, I, this thing's going to be in the can. I, I it, I assume it's going to be feature complete this month sometime. I mean, it's going to yeah, be think. kind of bearing down on this. Yeah. It's going to be pretty quick. It's not a huge upgrade. Well, there's a new icon for File Explorer, Leo. I'm not, I don't know why I have to keep explaining <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Is there, I mean, is there Inc. more Inc. under the hood? I mean, it doesn't... Yeah. Um, well, no, remember, the, the Windows Ink stuff is brand new, and that's pretty big. Ink. Oh, yeah, um, I have Ink now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edge is yeah. getting extensions. That's pretty big. Um, yeah. Actually, did we we didn't get to that yet? Um, this, you know, it's 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 the biggest update so far. I mean, I granted it's the second update so far, but it it's you know, yeah. it's it's a it's it's fairly significant. Um, it's like a Windows ninety eight SE kind of release, I guess. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. Service Pack two for Windows XP. I don't know something like that. Cool. Yeah. Just trying to gin up some excitement here. And again, <laughs> File Explorer icon, awesome. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Yep. Although they take it out of the taskbar by default, you know. I, I recently, I haven't published this yet, but I'm writing this thing about uh, simplicity and user experiences and so forth. And years ago when Windows 7 was probably still not released yet, I'd written something about simple versus easy. And I was complaining about how they were going in the direction of Mac OS X, which was to make things simpler by just stripping stuff out of the UI, which doesn't make it easier, right? But if you're experienced with the system, it doesn't matter that much because you know where things are. And and them taking the File Explorer icon off the taskbar reminded me of that. It was very much like what they had were screwing around with with the taskbar in Windows 7 at the time, um, which was streamlining it, but in effect making it less easy to use, especially for average users. I guess the theory there is no one needs the file, the file system. Mm. It's the dumbification of Windows, the the dumbening. What's the, the term? Dumbening. The dumb dumbening. Downing. Here yeah. it coming. Dumpton Abbey. <laughs> <ing of. laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's see here. Um, Windows Ten Remote Desktop. Oh, yeah, we should we should definitely Did we not have that, that before. Mentioned. What was the? You had we, the no. Windows 8.1 remote desktop, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is the Windows 10 version of Microsoft's remote desktop app for PCs and for mobile, and it's especially interesting. I I would say on mobile because it is one of the things that's going to let people use their Win32 apps through Continuum. Right. Um, Continuum's designed to work with UWP apps, but if you have the correct licensing in place to make use of remote desktop, you could actually access your Win32 apps off your PC and run those through Continuum onto a big screen. So that's pretty cool. Um, the thing is, this app, you know, if, if you're from, you know, that Windows, desktop Windows has come with um, a remote desktop client mm -hmm. forever right it's i mean it you know it's been in windows for a long long time and of course that app is a desktop like a win32 desktop app um mm -hmm. it, it's kind of odd to me that 
this app they take they took it out of preview but it still doesn't support a lot, a lot of features of you would think would be <laughs> you know, know? Yeah. so among the features that are missing are uh, support for microphones multiple simultaneous connections dynamic resolution and rotation printer and smart card redirection and mm -hmm. this is the most amazing one localization <laughs> like it's english only how, yeah. Why would they take this thing out of preview? I know. What was I, I'm curious why they are too. Yeah. It, it seems Strange. like you'd leave this in preview, but yeah. Hmm. I guess I preview goes that on. The, uh, the lack of multiple simultaneous connections is why they call it remote desktop and not remote desktops. Uh. <laughs> so you can only have one at a time. Good to know. Yep. Oh, 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 I just saw yeah. it. Last don't pass get, for Edge. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's don't here? get too excited. It, oh. So I think what happened was somebody found LastPass and then they published the URL. Oh. And if you had the if you had the then current, which is the still current insider build, it would install, but you'd never see it. And then Microsoft updated it so that it requires a new build that we don't have yet. Oh. But it's, <laughs> so I'm get I, I think this one's big enough that when it actually is released officially, there's gonna be an announcement. Because the last pass is obviously one of the big. It's the only thing I keeping like, me from using Edge. I want my last yeah. It's pass. like yeah. ad blocking and last pass right. are like the two big ones, <laughs> and right? They got so ad blocking. So I'm guessing we're going to see it as soon as today. It's interesting. So last pass has week. that much market cloud. It's that well known. Yeah. I mean, I know it is here because we talk about it a lot, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah. There, that would be the only password manager at this point. Uh, there yes. Isn't, I mean, uh, the, well, I mean, the, the browser, browser the browser has yeah. right. password pre uh, retention, and, and you don't can recommend sync. those. But uh, yes, hmm. yeah, good. Um, wait a minute, Gabe Hall. <laughs> I was waiting for him to see. <laughs> Whoa! Hold on there. Hold what? on there. What's going oh. on? I know. Is he leading? It's He's, a sad there's been day, a but I love coup. gay ball. There's been a palace coup. He was too forthright, too <laughs> honest. As it turns yeah. out, he's been doing two jobs since last August. Oh, like, God. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I mean, go ahead. You you wrote about this, in fact. Uh, well, right. But I mean, I'll we let, both Go ahead, both anything. of you, please. No, yeah. go ahead. I, I, no, you. <laughs> you <laughs> Fine. I will talk flowery about him first and you can okay. so no I, I we both we love Gabe and he's such a great guy and he's been running the Windows Insider program since it's been a thing we uh, he's been at Microsoft forever but we didn't really I didn't become aware of him until they announced Windows 10 and then Gabe was kind of a thing all of a sudden and you know public facing and he's been managing the Windows Insider program and doing an awesome job and I have to say aside from the day-to-day -day work that he must do around getting the builds out and so forth it's the communication stuff that he really excels at. And that's something we don't really uh, talk about a lot with Microsoft because most of their communication is so terrible. But not only does he provide the blog posts that explain what's going on in each build, but he, he gets down in the trenches, by which I mean Twitter, and he actually interacts with people all day long every day. I now, I do this as well, but I am an insane person because of it. <laughs> and he is still sunny and happy and positive, and I don't know how he does it. And, he, you know, he's one of those guys who... There are no bad ideas. There is no bad feedback. I love that you guys are so enthusiastic. And I would be t muttering to myself, well, I'm in a fetal position in the corner, from, you know, based on the same kind of feedback. Like, I don't know how he does it. So <laughs> to know. me, he's just an amazing guy. Um, so we'll yeah. miss him because dealing with him was great. But he's staying at Microsoft. We should be quick to note. Um, yes. there, were, there was actually a rumor last week that I chased for a minute that said um, Gay Ball had left Microsoft. Ooh. And now it yeah. turns out that uh, it seems that rumor was about him leaving this position. Right. So yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. Um, so what? What's his other position? Because he he actually accepted a different position last August, but retained the Windows Insider stuff as well. So he was really doing two jobs. Yeah. So um, he he also is head of engineers in the Windows and Devices group, and he says mm -hmm. he he kind of has the same job inside that he has outside, which is. The, he has to interface with those people in the engineering systems group as his customers, right? So I think right. he's going to be working on, my understanding is he's going to be working on uh, kind of improving some of the processes around flighting windows and some of the back end stuff. So he's still going to be involved, 
in right. what people see that comes out of the Windows and Devices group, but he is passing the torch. torch. Yeah. <laughs> so we should talk about the new head of the Windows mm -hmm. Insider program, who okay. is the new Gabe. Her name is Donna <laughs> Sarkar. Yep. She also is a longtime Microsoft employee. In fact, an engineer who worked on mm -hmm. Vista. Don't hold that against her, though. She or on HoloLens. Don't hold that against her. <laughs> right. Now now on HoloLens. <laughs> right. So she's, yep. she's got a lot of experience in different groups in the, within the Windows organization. Um, and she is now the head of the Windows Insider program. Wow. This person, you should look her up sometime, um, it seems to be fairly amazing. I mean, she's yeah. <laughs> very active in social networks, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. She has her own personal blog. She's a fashion blog. She's a published author. <laughs> like, she, yeah. she's very she's active. I mean, Doing it all, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it seems pretty impressive. So uh, I can't, I don't really know, I don't remember, remember or know if I've met her before, but she looks familiar. I, I, I don't think I have. Yeah, I'm I know, not sure. Which is surprising, yeah. I'm right, she's worked on Windows camera. Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. I mean, she's been in the Windows yeah. organization for a long time, leading a bunch of different feature teams. So she um, she knows her stuff, and she it's going to be interesting to see how she works with all of us nuts who are constantly badgering <laughs> them for builds. <laughs> I will um, be sharing my calendar with her so she knows what publish builds, like when I'm right. traveling. Right. Um, That's an important, important part of the yeah, important part of the job, yeah. yeah. And hopefully we're going to get her one day on Windows Weekly. That's our goal, okay. to have her come on the way that Gabe, Gabe did, too. So yeah. We'll yep. work on that. She has yet to release the first build. It could be any time. Hmm. Yeah, and that's another reason. To, I mean, we should have one this week anyway, but I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it happened today, tomorrow, soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think she'll be as um, communicative on Twitter and, and so forth? I don't know. I mean, I... I, I I, based on how active she is on social networks already, I think there's a possibility. I, but I also think that Gabe is a rare yeah. personality. I, 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 th I think the, the just the the awfulness of Twitter, especially, <laughs> really on some, on some people. It certainly does on me. And I, we'll see. You know, I don't know what she's you know used to or what what she's like. So we'll see. I, I, I hope so. I, I think one of the neat things that Gabe did was. Uh, respond to people individually, um, actually try to find answers to questions and just be generally helpful. Um, you know, so he was, you know, he was a special guy. I mean, I, it's a, it was a big shoes to fill. So we'll see. Uh, yep. And now an I can't author. start my other blog. According I'm to sad. Blog, this is I was going to start all about all, but now yeah. I am not going to. Uh, more about the also... car. Is this her? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. She's a fashion designer? Yep. Yeah, she also is a fashion designer and a fashion blogger. She, she does it all what? pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That is an interesting uh, yep. confluence. And here she is at Holo Hacks, Fremont. Mm -hmm. um, neat. I mean, yeah. wow, this is an interesting person. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, she's big in the STEM stuff, as you would expect. She uh, mm -hmm. has written books, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's... Uh, it's very interesting. So, fashion designer, engineer. Yep. Wow. I that's thought uh, how well, I, I describe be... myself as well. So that's not <laughs> really <laughs> that unusual. Oh, wait a minute though. You gotta love the name of her fashion blog, Fibonacci Sequins. <laughs> yep. Holy, there you. It's a, it's there's, a geek joke. That's a joke uh, Anna Wintour did not get. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a great name <laughs> for a, a blog, the Fibonacci Sequins. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> That's good. Okay. I, okay, I mean, I, losing gay ball, not good, but mm -hmm. a worthy uh, successor. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And she, so what is that role? It's not a managerial role, is it? It sounds like it's more of a community outreach. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, right. I mean, I, I, I assume. I, I, look, I, I mean, I don't know how the development process is now. Back in the day, they always had these war rooms for builds and things. I mean, there has to be some criteria that builds go through before they are pushed out to certain audiences, including publicly through the fast and slow ring and whatever else there is these days. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know that she is the person that has the final say on all this stuff, but I, I, you know, Gabe often talked about the red button and, you know, pushing the build out to the public. I mean, I assume part of it is ceremonial, but part of it is probably interesting managerial. You interesting. Know. Wow. The, the red button has been passed on. It has. Yep. Now it's going to be um, kind of a, it will have sequins on it <laughs> in some form <laughs> of Fibonacci silk. sequins. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Time for another break. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just rearing up to it. You were just getting going? <laughs> I'm just, I'm still reeling from Fibonacci sequins. I know. That is, that is good. It's an awesome good. name for a fashion mm -hmm. blog. Our show today brought to you by Food, Fashion and Food, and Blue Apron. You might look pretty stylish in that Blue Apron, huh? Blue Apron is, uh, is for people who want to cook great, delicious meals but are busy. Hard-working people. Blue Apron delivers the all the ingredients, the recipe, everything to make an amazing meal for you and your family right to your door. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. And I like this second part. While supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standard for ingredients, and building a community of home chefs. It is really great. Cooking... You know, if you read um, Michael Pollan's books, cooking is one of the great things we still do that's a social experience. It's for me, when I cook for my family, I, it, it's like making love in a casserole dish. And <laughs> actually, I'm going to stop with this metaphor right now. But it, it, it feels great. And then they sit down, they, they eat, and you, you've shared something. It's a chance to get together. And Blue Apron, I think, is doing a great job of making this doable in today's busy lives. And by the way, affordable, less than $10 a serving, and you're going to get seasonal recipes because they get their produce from local farms at the peak of freshness. Um, each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card. All the ingredients are just right, exactly what you need, so there's no waste. Like, if you need one, you know, celery rib, that's what you get. You don't get a whole bunch, so I like that. And everything can be done in less than 40 minutes, so it's perfect for somebody getting home from work, don't want to go shopping, don't go to the fast food place. Don't take the family out to eat. Make a nice meal from Blue Apron. You can customize the recipes you get, the ingredients you get based on your dietary preferences. Choose a delivery option that works with your schedule. Uh, and there's no weekly commitment. You don't you don't get automatic. You know, you don't arrive and say, oh I, didn't, oh, I forgot I was getting a box. No, 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 no. Not automatic. You get it when you want it. They deliver to 99% of the continental United States. And they, they set very high standards, 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the U.S. That's where you're getting your products. Never frozen, always fresh. The box is refrigerated. Seafood is sourced sustainably. The beef is raised humanely. The chicken's free range. The pork is raised naturally. They use regenerative farming practices for the produce, so they're not leaching the nutrients out of the land. This is, this is, this is what you would want for stuff you're going to make for your family. And, uh, and you're going to try stuff that you've never tried before, whether I love it, whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, you're getting the best. So, this week, go to blueapron.com slash twit. See what's on the menu. Spicy Korean rice cakes with snow peas and pea shoots. Yum. New Eng oh. Oh, I oh, this is for my youth. New England-style salmon rolls with roasted potato and chives. Man. Oh, they have family plans, so they have kid-friendly ingredients, ingredients, or you can get it for just a couple. That's what Lisa and I do. We cook really nice meals for each other. It's very romantic. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free with free shipping, too, by going to blueapron.com slash twit. You will love how good it feels and tastes. Cook a little love tonight. Blueapron.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. I love our sponsors. We got some. Cook a little love. Cook a put a little love in the oven. <laughs> For, that's uh, <laughs> that's a potentially racy. Uh, put a casserole slogan. dish filled with love in that oven tonight. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Fry up some right. loving and oh, sprinkle man. it with kisses. Because here comes mm. my blue apron. You know, all of these were rejected slogans, but Leo had to bring yeah, them back. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Be like, yep, that's what we didn't why, why do you still have a job here? Yeah. <laughs> Blue Apron's uh. rejected slogans yep. here on Twitter. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> Outlook, by the way, what am I going to get if I go to Outlook.com? Am I going to get the new Outlook? Do I even care anymore? I, I can tell you what I'm going to get when what? I go. The old one, because I still never get the new one. I don't know. I'm never going to get it. They've decided to make you last. They told me this. That's the old one, right? Yep. If it doesn't say Outlook Mail, it's the old one. It's like, okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I don't care. <laughs> um, I don't care. It's, I don't care anymore. It's okay. Uh, did Outlook.com have a spam meltdown? What, what's that all about? <laughs> huh? Mm. Huh? Hey, <laughs> this is all you. Although, you know what? I'll say, I'm on the new Outlook.com, and it didn't happen to me. Oh, Although oh, I, oh just to us oldsters. No, because I asked on Twitter if people saw that pattern, and some people who had the new Outlook.com said they did have this problem. So okay. I guess it isn't just about the new one. But okay. 17 hours or so, people were reporting spam was just pouring into their Outlook.com inbox. And it didn't affect everyone, but it affected a lot of people. A mountain of spam. Yeah, mountain of spam. <laughs> uh, and I don't think they said why or what happened. Um, it just, just someone happened. just <laughs> turned the switch off. Yep. I know. Well, yeah. they have anti spam filtering. Do you think the anti spam filtering faltered or is it another? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Is it yeah, like something. spam aimed at you or just kind of like switch I think overflow? Just, I think it was just turned off. I, oh, I think yeah. so. Gentle spam. Happened. Okay, that's yep. what happened then. Yeah, Brad yeah, contacted yeah. me this morning. He said, I got this story about uh, spam is not working, you know, spam, <laughs> anti spam is not working in uh, Outlook.com or whatever. And I'm like, Aren't you on vacation? I know. <laughs> not anymore. No. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm back, very, baby. I think he said, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so. By the way, another uh, Blue Apron slogan, uh, rejected slogan from Halis Tide You never know what's under the Blue Apron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, rejected rejected Blue Apron slogans. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, no, but that could happen. Sure. Somebody, yep. you know, pushed a button. You know, okay, conspiracy theory. But every once in a while, it's a good idea to turn off the spam protection to remind you how well it's doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. right? That's what somebody said on All Twitter. All this they were like, sewage <laughs> I don't see normally. I know. Yeah, I did. I did have a bunch of crap in my Outlook.com yeah. account. I mean, it just shows you how good spam filtering is is is, is, is that we don't because spam yeah. is spam has not gone away. It's still a huge. Oh yes, no, it's it's <laughs> huge it is uh, it's reached not. absurd levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's. Kind I'm of still ironic. amazed when spam gets through because I still get crazy yeah. emails uh, that are are clearly spam. You know that anyone. Even a small child would not be fooled by, and <laughs> the I don't know how that happens. Just can't but figure it yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Oh well, so it's off now, and it, not off. everybody I, I got it. Mary Jo didn't get it. I didn't get any. Yeah. Knock on wood. Gosh, oh, knock on my new Outlook.com. <laughs> they said it was fixed, but I mean, I still see complaints from people. I wonder if it's just oh, really? people noticing hmm. it now, or right, you know, or the, maybe the spam they weren't coming earlier. Right, so they didn't sign into did their account. Did it get cleared out? I mean. I'm, I did not get it, or, or if it did. So would I know? I mean, would it still be there? The spam? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Would they have removed it? Would they oh, have said, oh, whoops, and refiltered? Mm. Oh, I deleted it all. I don't, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Not sure. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Uh, well, anyway, I don't I don't see any in my, uh, in my inbox, my no. old school Outlook inbox. <laughs> When you guys finally get the new one, you're just going to be so disappointed. You're going to be like, oh, I know. that's it. I know. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? You know? I know. Oh, there's nothing here. Nothing to that's see It's just here. like Office 365. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, I'll be so happy to get it. I'll leave and leave on this stupid default signature for a couple of days. You know, <laughs> whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Using You're the new Outlook.com. <laughs> Outlook.com. Yep. Of course, that won't be till like September in my case, but whenever it happens. Right. All right. Um, any other little tidbits? Did you finish Doom? <laughs> no, I'm actually. <laughs> this is so awful. I, 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 I keep seeing these reviews of this game where everyone thinks it's so awesome, you know. And I keep going back to it, and I'm on this level. It's just one of those kind of 
end boss things, which a bunch of monsters. And it's a typical stupid doom. Like you kill a bunch of monsters and then more just appear because that's how they make it hard. And I keep dying and I just don't want to do it again. Like every time I'll go in, I'll play it. I won't make it. And I'm like, eh, I just don't care about this. So I still haven't finished it, but I will. I will. It's just, it's just, there's no love, <laughs> you know, of this thing. Like I just don't, it just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, it looks good in the ads, but I, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm listening to you and thinking I'm. Not I, gonna... I, I, look, I, I, I would just a lot of people love it, so don't go by just me. But I, I, I don't know. It's just not doing it for me. Not doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. MS... I have a couple tidbits. Yes. They're not Doom related, but oh, well, all right. <laughs> surprisingly, all right. okay. we'll allow it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, one of these tidbits might be very interesting to people working in startups because there's been a lot of back and forth, in fact, lately. Our friend Long Zeng has has kind of uh, been fueling a discussion on Twitter lately about why doesn't Microsoft invest in any small early stage startups? Google does it. Intel does it. Everybody does it. Why not Microsoft? You're missing and a, lo you're and missing behold, a good opportunity, right? Lo and behold, they're going to do it now. Oh. Um, they had a group in Microsoft called Microsoft Ventures that wasn't really um, an investment type organization. It was more a uh, part of Microsoft that was under the developer evangelism team that seeded technology and uh, kind of brought know-how to startups when they needed help. But now Microsoft's retaking that name, Microsoft Ventures, and turning it into a true investment organization. So the types of companies they're looking to invest in not too surprising, cloud, security, machine learning. Um, also, anybody who's doing work around uh, Windows 10 and Azure um, and HoloLens, of course. So if you're a startup in any of those spaces, you should probably check out the new Microsoft Ventures. And the part of Microsoft that used to be called Microsoft Ventures is now called Microsoft Accelerator. Hmm. So that's one little tidbit for our friends in startups. Um, Another one I wanted to mention um, this week is a deal that Microsoft announced late last night with the Chinese phone maker Xiaomi. Is that how you pronounce that? X-I-A-O-M-I? Yep. Xiaomi. 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 So um, this was really interesting because Microsoft's done a lot of Android patent deals. They do them all the time where they get a company using Android to agree to license Microsoft patents. And this on the surface, appears to be that kind of a deal also. But as part of this deal, Microsoft also sold 1,500 patents to Xiaomi. So not only did they do the licensing part and they got Xiaomi to agree to preload Microsoft software and services on future products, but they sold them 1,500 communications-related patents, um, communications, video, cloud, and multimedia patents. So very, very interesting. This is a this is even a bigger deal than a lot of those typical Microsoft Android patent deals. Those you know, are my tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things going on with this one, this one's kind of interesting because uh, we keep wondering, well, A, it's an Android company. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But B, we keep wondering why they don't sell in the United States. But I think and this is... And this will indemnify them, right? Right, right. Um, right. So they'll have these patent... Uh, they make some beautiful looking phones. I mean, I well, no, I would, I would love to get a Xiaomi. Very the, interested in yeah. The Mi Note and the Mi Four, or five, mm -hmm. I don't know if they have a five yet. Are you know really yep. killer phones? The, but there is another problem, which is they they have a kind of a Chinese version of Android on them. Right. Um, so they'd have to. Um, I, I don't know how much they'd have to Americanize it. Mm. They don't. They, they, don't, they have they Mi, Mi UI. Phones. It's a different. It's Android, but it's their own UI. Yeah. They only the only U.S. product they've launched is a TV, right? Something, yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's, it's not a, a like phone. a set top box or something. Set -top or, or is box, it right. an actual TV? Or, no, I, I think yeah, you're right. It's a set top box. Thinking by headphones, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's just some limit. Yeah, yeah, but obviously, but the phones are coming. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, it's just a matter of time, and they look great. You know, they're really yeah. nice looking. Yeah, I think a lot of people would uh, would really like it. Is this, is this the company that did Hugo Barra go to this company from Google, yeah. or did yes. he go to? Yeah, that's the whole. That's why this yeah. whole thing is very interesting. It is. Uh, yeah, I always see. You could, if if you said, "Oh, Google did," you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I would say, "Oh, well, of course." 
but it's Microsoft. Yeah. And um, there's yeah, been speculation, was... you know, Microsoft takes five to 10 to maybe $15 per mm. handset right, uh, right. because of the Linux license. I wonder, you know, I wonder that they, they didn't say they took a stake in the company, right? No, mm -hmm. they did not. They, it was a cross patent licensing deal where both of them licensed patents from each other. Uh, but no financial terms were disclosed. No particulars about the patents were disclosed. That's really interesting. I feel like there's there's something going on there. Something more. Something more right? to this. Mm -hmm. um, the Mi Box, they say. The Xiaomi Mi Box. <laughs> it sounds Mi. it sounds great in Chinese. And not so good. <laughs> Mi Box. Yeah, but like their name doesn't their name mean something like little rice or something? Xiao like Xiao means little Xiao. Huh. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what the. Oh, name you're is. thinking of Shao Ice, the Chinese Cortana, right? Oh yeah, that's what that's what no, he's thinking. Well, of. no, but I, I I thought their name might have meant. I'll look it up. I thought it meant something like little rice or little rice, mm. a little bit of rice. Millet technology. A little millet. <laughs> millet. <laughs> little millet. That's something that doesn't really translate so well. To me. <laughs> Little millet. Uh, little bit of millet. <laughs> it's my brother, little millet. <laughs> little millet. It's a little millet soft in the head, Fillmore. that kid. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think we've run out of Microsoft tidbits. <laughs> We're gonna they also make a smart rice cooker. Maybe that's what it is. Do they? <laughs> yeah, yes. Wow. It's only for selling in China, obviously. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what the issues were. Why, you know, what the speculation was why they didn't sell in the United States. And... Uh, yeah. I think Isn't the biggest one is spying. No. Well, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that would you know the problem is all phones are made in China, including every one of I those know, Nokia phones. I know, but there was so, something special about that one, wasn't there? I don't, I don't. Yeah, the uh, the Department of Commerce at one point recommended not if you're a U.S. business, not using products from. I don't think Xiaomi was on that list. Huawei, maybe it was mm -hmm. Xiaomi. Yeah. But there was some concern because some of these companies had were there was a the Chinese military, much mm -hmm. like Microsoft, invests in, in, <laughs> yep. in new technologies. Oh, I thought you were going to say had a backdoor. <laughs> no, yep. the Chinese yep. military uh, actually well, well, owns well some of these known, companies. The well known NSA backdoor on Windows. Yes, yeah. continue. Yeah, well known. <laughs> actually, now yep. now now you got me. A Xiaomi Chinese military. That's probably a sufficient Google search. I wonder if the Chinese military uses their awesome smart rice cooker. Yeah. Yeah. The Indian Air Force has asked its personnel not to use Xiaomi phones. Mm. Really? Because it believes they, uh, these phones... Oh, they had to delay their uh, release in India recently. I wonder if that was related to it. Yeah. Oh, here's a Some story kind of... from 2014. Xiaomi opens up about servers after spying allegations. Oh, uh, all right. Are they secretly sending user data India. to Chinese servers? Yeah. We seem to be uh, India for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, they've been banned in India. It says the High Court of Delhi granted an, extent, an injunction banning the import and sale of uh, Xiaomi products in India. Huh. Based on a complaint filed by Ericsson in connection with infringement of patent licenses. Right. Under Frand, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, that's hmm. another matter. By the way, of course, LG and Samsung make their phones in Korea, so go ahead and use hmm. those. Um <laughs> Well, and the Google, you know, the flagship Google phones made by Huawei, another Chinese company. Right. Yeah. I have a Huawei right. phone. Yep, so do I. Your Those, 5X and that's is a, LG. That's a, yeah. The big one's the, the Huawei. I have the 6P. Oh, you have, yeah. oh, did you? Wait. Whoa, mm, 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 mm. I bought the 6P. Whoa, <clears throat> boo, 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 I went boo, all fangirl. Are you burying boo. the lead here um, a little bit? No. Nah. <clears throat> I went all fangirl. When I, if I'm going to go Android, I'm going to go big. You know, I like the Literally. 6P better than the 5X. <laughs> I think the 6P is the right one. That's the, <laughs> that's the flagship phone. Let's do a little segment on Android briefly. Uh, oh, oh, God. Geez. What is happening here? <laughs> First bash now, Android. Oh, so is that your daily driver is a 6P? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Chinese yes. government will be very interested. They like my phone. <laughs> they're very, yeah, they're very interested. They'll be very All interested. It's the screen comes on at night sometimes. Yeah. I don't know why. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody there? You know, if you had the Ring video doorbell on your front door, you wouldn't have to worry about Chinese agencies. That's the coming Leo by. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
The Ring video doorbell is like, uh, I, I like to think of it as caller ID for your house. It's really cool, actually. We, we put one in. God, it's been a year now, I think. Very easy. You know, we have a fairly new home, but I don't know what it is about doorbells, but they're like the cheesiest electronics in the whole house. And, you know, just crap. And you know they have paint drips on them, and they just they're rattly. And they and how often do you see signs doorbell doesn't work, knock, the chimes in the house they go tonk 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 tonk. And so I was kind of welcoming the chance to upgrade the doorbell, but I didn't just get a new dinger, or a new donger. I got Ring. And I am so happy. First of all, very easy to install. I'm no handyman, but that ring comes with all the stuff you need, the screwdriver. The, if you needed a drill bit, a level so you can really put it in nicely. Simple enough. Take off the old doorbell. Two wires will come out of the door. You trim those through this back plate. Connect them to the terminals. It's actually instantly a better installation than it was. Uh, and then you attach your ring video doorbell. And they use it with a custom uh, uh, Torx bit. So uh, to kind of deter anybody from trying to remove it. Incidentally, they do have a guarantee. If anybody does steal your ring doorbell, they'll replace it for you. Um, comes with an HD camera, microphone, and speaker. Okay, why do you have that? Well, it ties into your Wi-Fi. So somebody rings a doorbell. Not only does my chime still go ding dong in the house, my phone rings, my tablet rings, my computer rings, everything rings. Because it's tied to the internet. And even if I'm not home, in fact, just before the show, my ring video doorbell went off and I said, oh, quick, I think I actually was in the show. Maybe you might have heard it. I had to mute my phone real quick. Because the, when, when somebody comes to my door, I hear it. And not just ringing the doorbell, but there's a motion detector in it too, which makes it really great for just keeping an eye on what's going on on the neighborhood outside. Yeah, it was, it was actually during the show, 1226. I can see a video of whoever was coming to visit Oh, somebody leaving the house there using the ring video doorbell. You know, 95% of home break-ins happen during the day. And what do they do? They come up, they ring your doorbell. When you don't answer, they go around back and break in. Well, now you'll answer even when you're at work, even when you're across the world, across the globe. Your ring video doorbell is there to keep an eye on things. All activity, rings, missed ring last night at 6.04 p.m., motion, it's all logged here. You can see I have more than one if you want. Ring video doorbell. They have a new advanced ring video doorbell. This is a 720p camera. They now have one with a 1080p camera. That's uh, $249. Uh, it'll, it just started shipping, I think. Uh, we have an offer on the original ring doorbell. It's $199. And if you go to ring.com slash WW, uh, you will get free expedited FedEx shipping. I just, I love this. If somebody comes to, you know, the UPS guy comes to the door, I could say, I'm not here. Please leave it, leave the package. I could keep an eye on the package. Oh, there goes my dog. <laughs> the ring, <laughs> you know, I've used this for, it's fun. Like if you're, if you might think about this, I, Paul, you mentioned your teenage son. It's always <laughs> nice to be able to confront them with the evidence, you know. Well, I see here at 2 a.m. you're arriving uh, home. You want to? Tell me I, anything listen, about this. This is my entire life right now, Leo. These kind of conversations. Yeah. Right? Ring video. <laughs> Paul, you want one? I'll get one sent to you. Would you like one? Come on. Come on, Paul. You know, come on. Come on. Paul. Come on. You know you want <laughs> I, one. I'm, come I, on, Paul. Okay. Ring.com. It's all right. You don't have to have one. Ring.com yep. slash WW. Free expedited FedEx shipping. Get your ring now. You already That's have so one? terrible. What? No, I was going to say, I noticed you have a uh, Google Nexus photo or map cover or whatever, whatever that's oh, called, I do. live cover. I do. Yeah, I'll talk about that in what? a second. Yeah. Yeah, what's the map? What's what, Where did you? Um, it looks like okay. Paris from afar. Oh, my it? God, you're good. Holy <laughs> cow, Paul Ferrat, you are amazing. Because there's no, there's no designation on there. Right. Would you know that that's Paris if you looked at it? I mean, yeah, I, that's why I just said Paris. So I, uh, if you look at mine briefly, which yeah. I don't know. What do you? Oh, you have a, a close a, up a, of a, Paris. A close up of the same exact place. Oh my God! I didn't know uh, I could get a close up. You want to see mine? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you can see mine. Paris. What do you have? I made my own. Cover, oh, that's pretty. Um, with a picture I took in Vietnam. Wow, that's you took that picture. Pretty that's cool. gorgeous. Yep. I have a second one, <laughs> which is a photo of, <laughs> of, a, of a building in Paris. 
<laughs> so okay, not only have we derailed a, we're the ring commercial, the product. <laughs> but now we're, we're talking about Android phone cases. Uh, yeah, this is you know what these the the the, the idea I actually was going to show this because I have another one. Um, with a Kuhn, with a Kuntz sculpture on it, right, or something like that, um, Jeff Kuntz. But um, so the idea is it has an NFC chip inside, and mm -hmm. you press it. But I couldn't. I never got that quite working. Does that work for you? I, no, it definitely it never works. Yeah. It's so terrible. It's you have to press it really hard. It's too hard. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah I don't want to push my phone that hard. Yeah, oh, okay. it makes yeah. me nervous. But yeah. it's cool it's not, to have the. I don't have. like it. I don't like that feature, but I like everything else about it. And then I guess there's an app that will give you custom wallpaper to match mm -hmm. your, yeah. your... Or you can have rotating wallpapers. Right. Oh, oh, I have to look into that then. Because I do like I, like... I get bored with the same old, same old. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that from the side, I could tell it was a map cover. You I are mind-blowing. And not yes. only that, you knew it was Paris. I know Paris, Leo. You do know Paris. <laughs> and, and, uh, Paris is my home from home. See, there's the Seine. And there's the uh, Ile Saint Louis and the up Ile de la Cité, yeah. But up, but right, right, that's there. where we're going to be this summer. In the camera hole? <laughs> no, a little, a little halfway between the camera hole and the river. Yeah, I'll tell you where we're going to be. So is that the left bank or is that the right bank? That's the, the right, right bank. bank. We're going to be right here in September. Right. Uh, Luxembourg Gardens. Where's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're in the we're in the uh, the uh, the Latin, Latin quarter. quarter. Yeah, Quartier mm -hmm. Latin. Where all sure. the students go. We have a little... little when are you going to be there? there? September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And then we go... Then we fly... This is really silly. To Stockholm. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, the deal was... So, we go on one really nice trip every year. We're going on a cruise. Mm -hmm. It's the Baltic cruise. or are in St. Petersburg. Yep. And, uh, and uh, Lisa said, oh, fine. Once again, we don't get to go to Paris. I'll well, fly into Paris, spend so a couple I, days. Exactly. So I hung my head. Problem and I solved. said, okay. And we're flying to Paris, spending a couple of days, and then going on to the cruise. She she says, I don't want to go anywhere if it doesn't include Paris. I say that every day. I, I don't want <laughs> to go to day. Kroger's unless it includes yep. Paris. I don't even want to get Chinese food delivered no, unless there are should, tickets to Paris it, with the yeah. delivery. Well, see, this, yep. is, this is why... You know, yeah, yeah. And that picture of what is the picture in Vietnam? What is that a picture of a river? Or? It's a it's a picture um, from Hanoi of a statue that's oh, in a park. It's beautiful. Hold it up again. Yeah, let's see it again. It's a really cool. It it's a three D like a. It looks like relief. It, yeah. It know. looks like it's sticking out. Yeah. Yeah. It or, is. is it on or, the or bas looks, relief if you want to be fancy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks thank like you. it's sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hologram, Leo. It's, it's a hologram. That's it. Augmented it's a, reality. It's, it's, this it's, is it's, my augmented reality. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could say by relief, but I think it looks like it's sticking out. Paul the right. <laughs> time for your tip of the week. Are we really there yet? We're really the back of the book, baby. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Um, it's June 1st today, so obviously my monthly reminder about games with gold. Uh, four, yeah. What do yeah. we got? What actually, got? four new games didn't become available today. But um, to me, the, the good ones are actually on the Xbox 360 this month. Uh, Super Meat Boy, which is awesome. Wait a minute. What? Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy? Yep. <laughs> it's actually a little boy made of meat, like hamburger meat. <laughs> Oh, and it's what? kind of a, I know, I know. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a puzzle platformer. What about so Super Tofu Boy? Yeah. Is that, yeah this uh, is the anti vegetarian. It's game. an animated cube of meat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know. Guys, I'm never make... going over to the gaming dark side. <laughs> you just, you're not helping. Just, you're not, not helping, Paul. I, I, okay, so one thing, Mary Jo, that you should watch is a movie called Indie Game the Movie. If you mm -hmm. haven't seen it, it's a documentary about video game designers. And one of them is the guy who made Super Meat Boy while it was still in production, you know, still being made at the time. And it follows these uh, four groups around with their games, uh, all of which I believe now, you know, long since probably come out. Um, it's awesome. It is an awesome documentary. And uh, a lot of these people, you know, they they have no lives at all during the you know making of the game. And then in some cases they become super successful. Um so it's an I indie game. I think that's cool. Yeah. 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 
Um, and then, it's you know, cartoony. Course. It's not. It's a puzzler. Yeah. It looks fun. So you lose little meat droppings around as he goes. <laughs> and then when he gets hit, when he gets hit by something, you know, it's he kind of <laughs> like a meat <laughs> explosion. Oh, God. Yeah, like look, there's little splats. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that is horrible. Oh I'm my sorry. God. <laughs> well, look, he's got a little smiley face. He's cute. Oh, and he's missing a tooth because all meat has teeth. Right. <laughs> well, it depends where you buy it. Yeah. Um, but better game. than Super Meat Boy, Goat Simulator. <laughs> yep, yep. The greatest Goat game simulator. of all time. So meat being thrown around. It's a li it's live though. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, well, right. It's not dead goat simulator. It's true. Although it is often dead goat simulator well, you because get, you can get in trouble. Gets hit by buses and yeah. you know. It's not a game. It's a lifestyle. It's just a yes. it's just fun. Yes. It's so the physics fun. experiments is what it yeah, is. Yeah, you you just button things and oh, it's so much fun. I love it. Oh, it's free today on the Xbox One. Yeah. Free this all all month, right? I mean, it's not right. Not, starting I don't have to today, rush. So. I don't have to rush right. there. That one is the entire month. That's right. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so I mentioned indie game, the movie. Everyone should watch this movie I if will. you haven't seen it. I will. Uh, very very good. Um, a couple of bonus tips. Uh, Microsoft has released a new version of the Work and Play bundle, which I found out from my friend Dave because he had bought it last year and they tried to get him to renew. Um, I actually don't recommend it this year. Um, it's more expensive than it was before and there's less stuff in it. And basically, uh, they've dropped uh, the Skype, you know, Wi-Fi plus Unlimited World, which was worth 170 bucks. Um, the gift card that they give you is smaller than it was before. And if you just look at the two key parts of it that I think most people would want, Office 365 Home and Xbox Live Gold, those two things together are about $160 a year. The new version of the Work and Play Bundle costs $200. So $25 gift card that gets you up to about $185. Basically, you're paying $15 for a one-year membership to AnswerDesk, which is the Microsoft Azure Assure, I should say, Assure support plan, which does normally cost $150 a year, but it's only really useful for people who can go into a store and be there personally, I think, um, or it's mostly useful with those people. So it's it's kind of too bad because this was always kind of a cool bundle. It used to have Xbox Music as part of it back when that was a thing, the Xbox Music Pass. Um, when the, that went away, they dropped that and they added some other stuff, and it's just it's just not as good as it used to be. So skip that one. Um, and then the Microsoft Band 2 is now $50 off. This is actually, I think, the fourth month in a row this year. So four of the five months. Actually, we're in June now. So it started at the end of last month um, where it has been on sale. So it's $50 off. Uh, actually, it's $75 off, excuse me, contrary to my notes. It's available for $175, normally $250. Um, the difference between this and previous sales is that this one is actually running through the end of July. So it's actually uh, over two months long. If you haven't gotten one, I guess the things you need to kind of balance here are, you know, the utility of the device, obviously, which I think is excellent. But there's also been some complaints from people about reliability issues where people are seeing, you know, the cracking and so forth. And my understanding is that Microsoft just replaces these things, uh, no questions asked. But um, there does seem to be that side issue. So $175 for this kind of thing is actually a good price. But... Um, you want to be really careful not to get it wet and whatever else might be causing the, you know, that breakage issue. Yeah. And on the Ad Duplex mobile tip, I'm sorry, Mac mobile app pick of the week, I actually went a little outside the box on this one because this one was just released today and it wasn't actually on their charts yet, but I know it's going to be at the top next week. So um, Viber for Windows 10 beta was just released today. Um, it's free. It's available across all Windows 10 devices. It is one of many services that lets you do HD quality phone and video calls securely over Wi-Fi and mobile networks. Um, I don't use it um, because, you know, we use Skype for everything, um, but this is another option, uh, especially for people who want a native Windows 10 app. And then my bonus app pick is for uh, something I do use. And actually, Mary Jo, this is something you might want to consider for your um, a Nexus 6B if you don't use it already which is the Microsoft Next lock screen, which uh, has been around for at least a year. It's, it's an awesome lock screen application. Uh, it's highly customizable. The thing I like about it is that it works a lot like the one awesome thing about Windows Mobile back in the day before there was a Windows phone, which is it has uh, different slots in the screen for different types of uh, notifications, you know, calendar, email, Facebook, whatever. 
and you can swipe on that notification and go right into that app from the lock screen. <clears throat> it also has themes for things like, you know, you're at work, you're at home. Um, it has all kinds of crazy uh, customization uh, function or uh, features and so forth. It was just updated to version three too. I guess uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything super this major in good, here. But actually, I might I might put this. On. <clears throat> it's a really good lock do screen. Think, uh, do you think I would use it much if I um, don't have that many apps installed? Like, would it still make sense for me to have it? Well, do yeah, you play because music it, on your phone. Do you have a calendar it, on your phone? Yeah, I have a yeah, calendar. Right. So yeah. the, here's the issue with the Nexus Six P. Um, a lot of times, what you do is you use your finger to log in from the back. And when right. you do that, right. you never bypass see the lock screen. screen. Yeah. Oh, but, right. So, okay, there's that. But yeah. uh, assuming that, but here, here's how you could, here's how I use it. Because I do still use it. Because you can, when you pick up the phone, if you hit the power button, this is what comes on. And you can mm -hmm. see what's going on. So it provides sort of a Windows phone like at a glance kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually deal with something, like say there's something from Skype and you're like, oh, I really want to answer this person. You can swipe on that thing and then still use your finger to log in and it still goes right to Skype. Yeah. So it still works. Yeah, but you just have to remember to power on with your with the okay. power button. Yeah, that's that the, would, that would the 6P I mean, and the 5X. That's the real issue. On the other hand, I'd like this right. would really be a better uh, lock screen than the Samsung gives me on my Galaxy S7. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have it on my 6P. It's a really nice. Uh, yeah. Let me see what's on there right now. In fact, yeah, like if and they I only this. make this for Android, right? Microsoft. Right. <laughs> Ironically, yes. So <laughs> I have a hand, I, I, a hand. What do you call it? Google hand. I was going to say, handouts, is that the name of the thing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Hangouts. 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 <laughs> handouts. I don't, hangouts. I don't know why I have a hangouts notification. I'll just show you this. I like that. I mean, I have, you can see, maybe sort of see, like there's yeah. a calendar That's thing. That's pretty. Yeah. Mary yeah. Jo sent me a Skype yeah. something. Someone has yeah. sent me a hangouts thing. There's email. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice. And, oh, it does the Bing picture of the day, right? You can have, you can configure yeah. it that way or your own picture. So that background was whatever the Bing picture of the day was. Mm -hmm. What do they call it? Handouts. <laughs> Google. Handouts. Someone Google is giving handouts. me a handout on Google. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> hangouts. I don't know why I get hangout I things. Think of, I, I like the new product, though. Google Handouts. <laughs> Google yeah. Handouts. It, they're mimeographed. Um, <laughs> yeah. They smell so Sorry, good. Sandrina. <laughs> well, look, I got the, when I got rid of my Google Handout, I got this, I don't know if you can see the, the weird little... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crying, crying Eskimo. <laughs> so sad. I feel you bad. You made though. an Eskimo cry. Yeah, not for the first time, Leo. It's better than Super Meat Boy. Let's just say that. Aww. It's a good game. I stand. Oh, all right. <laughs> Lots of good tips there from uh, Paul Thorat. Let's head over to the Enterprise side. Mary Jo Foley has some picks too. I do. Um, so my first Enterprise pick is a new service that Microsoft is starting to roll out for Office 365 business customers that is called the Advanced Security Management Tools. Um, what this is, is the Office 365 version of something Microsoft announced in April called the Cloud App Security Service. Cloud App Security Service is something Microsoft built on top of the um, acquisition it made of a company called Adalom. It's a set of tools that does some kind of granular control over your security situation. Um, there's one tool for identifying abnormal or high risk usage that you see within your uh, cloud apps. There's another tool for adding more granular controls to your security policies for those apps. And then there's a discovery and insights tool that lets people figure out where they ha may have shadow IT issues so that you can see where there's usage of different services um, that you may or may not want on your network. So if, you, if you're interested in implementing these tools for Office 365 and you are an Office 365 E5 customer, which is the highest end customer, you get them for free. You don't have to do anything. If you have another Office 365 plan other than E5, Microsoft is charging $3 per user per month for these tools. They're going to be rolling out um, starting today for the E5 customers and will be kind of phased in over time through the end of the third quarter for every, everyone else. So that's one of my enterprise picks. The other one is just a quick mention. Um, today is GA day for SQL Server 2016. Get so out. If, get out, I know. <laughs> 
So if you uh, are one of those people who've been waiting with bated breath for SQL Server 2016, June 1st, it's today, and you can go to MSDN or TechNet, or if you're a volume licensee, get it from the Volume Licensing Center, download it. Um, this is the latest version of SQL Server. We've talked about it on Windows Weekly a couple times. It's got everything but the kitchen sink in it. Microsoft says it's the version that has all everything baked in. It's got secure, advanced security, data warehousing, business intelligence, advanced analytics, hybrid cloud capabilities, you name it, it's in here. So if you're a SQL Server customer, you might want to go get SQL Server 2016 today. Nice. Uh, do you have a code name by any chance? I do. It's from the vault. A mm. Blast from the past on today's code name. Today's code name is Project B, which code name historians may recall stood for Project Baraboo, which was mm. the code name for the Hololens. Oh. Um, and I thought it was appropriate today since we talked a lot about the Microsoft Computex announcements around Hololens and AR and VR. Plus, Donna, Donna Sakar, who's becoming the new head of the Insiders program, also used to work on HoloLens. So wanted to bring it back. Project B, uh, which stood for Project Baraboo. Now, and what is Baraboo? Right, that's what I'm curious about. I was looking for what it is, and it's a town in Wisconsin. Oh. Um, but I don't know if there's any other significance to it or any other connection to it. <laughs> yeah. Anyone, anyone out there in chat world... Twitter world have any ideas why Microsoft might have used that as the code name? Hmm. It's an Alex Kipman code name. And you know, he the previous code name he had for Connect was Project Natal, but that had to do with him being from Brazil. Um, I don't think there's any Baraboo connection with Brazil, but I may be wrong. Hmm. So if anyone knows, we'd, That's a we'd like to know. Baraboo, Wisconsin. I know. That is a mystery. Maybe that's where Donna is from. <laughs> yeah, or maybe there's some significance. Like, remember when they were doing uh, Windows code names are all around like Longhorn and mm -hmm. it was a Lodge and Blackcomb and Whistler and all these things. Right. Maybe there's maybe there's some weird thing, like they went on a retreat for the HoloLens team in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I don't know. You can't get to a, a, a more succinct code name than Project B. Project B right. was good. Yeah. I Plan mean, B. You only get a couple of those, you know, 26, yeah. and then you got to start over. Project <laughs> A, A, B, B, C, C. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Project, hmm. B. Project B. And now, my friends, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a beer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yep. Paul is always ready for a beer. <laughs> yes, Mary, Mary Jo Foley is going to pour a beer, long, though. tall one for us. Um. So this may be our first beer pick from Wyoming. <laughs> um, yeah. wow. There is a very famous craft brewery in Wyoming called Melvin Brewing Company, wow. which I only discovered because a friend of mine in Seattle said to me, if you ever see Melvin beer anywhere, make sure you get it. So last week when I was in Seattle, I saw this beer. It's called Melvin 2x4. And this is <laughs> because this is it hits you like a two. It does. It hits you five, like a two by four. Ten percent. It's a double IPA. Ten percent and ninety eight IBUs. It is not for people who who are hop shy. I would say. Ah, and hence Paul's version to this. Hop adverse. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. hop adverse. It's very. I might actually be allergic. <laughs> It does hit you over the head like a two by four, but in a good way, floral, citrusy, juicy, all hops all the time. So if you're somebody unlike Paul Thorat who enjoys that style of beer, you may want to try the Melvin you're two by four. still hop averse, are you Unlike Paul, Paul Thorat is not <laughs> still. No, he, he likes Ooh, hoppy beers like if they're balanced, beers. I've, I've learned. So uh, by the way, I texted Mary Jo last night, or maybe it was on Skype, I don't remember, but I said, Hey, aren't you supposed to be at the Lagunitas event? That's right. At, uh, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just because I was there last week when you were away, you were away last week, yeah. And uh, they were. I met the guy from the brewery, and he was. They were getting the taps ready and everything. But I knew that Tuesday night w was the night that they were going to be there. 
And I, you know, I kind of struck up a conversation with him. So anyway, I reminded Mary Jo about an event at her local bar because, you know, that's what people do for each other. That's nice. That's nice. Was the, uh, <laughs> was the guy, the Lagunitas guy from Petaluma or was he like uh, a, a he, rep they hired? You know, He's a rep. I don't know yeah. if he was from Petaluma, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he had and been. And now they have that Pet big, they have a big Lagunitas brewery in Chicago. So we get a lot of the Chicago people here on the East Coast. Just not the same to me. <laughs> oh, no, ladies and gentlemen, not. Baraboo. Yes. Is the home to the Circus World Museum and the former headquarters and winter home of the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. Uh -huh. The Ringling Brothers Baraboo and Bailey Circus. <laughs> so <laughs> Hololens so the, Circus. The Burger King yeah. to the. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's that's a very chat, likely connection. Chat room like to the that. rescue on that one. Chat room, go chat room. They know. They know all. They see all. They sometimes they tell. <laughs> Ah, but what happens in the chat room stays in the chat room. Unfortunately, what happens on Windows Weekly is disseminated worldwide yep. over the internet. <laughs> then debated rigorously on Twitter. On Twitter. Yes. <laughs> Folks, if you want to join us, we love having you here every Wednesday, right about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Paul Therott from therott.com. And uh, little bitty books, little... <laughs> Mini books site. What is the name of it again? Baby books. Tiny hands press. Tiny hands press. Okay. Uh, no, sorry. Lean pub. It's still lean pub. Goddamn you. <laughs> sorry. Lean. <laughs> tiny hands press. Leanpub.com. And uh, Mary Where did Tiny hands press come from. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great name. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com, and each of them joins us every uh, Wednesday at, as I said, 11 a.m. If you can't be here live, do come back and uh, and watch uh, anytime on your own, uh, on your at your own convenience. Uh, Twit.tv slash ww is the official place to download, but you know we don't mind. Get it anywhere you can. It's on every podcast app, on every phone, everywhere, uh, and there are Twit apps for every platform, including Windows Phone. Um, and thanks to our third-party developers who do such a nice job. There's two Windows Phone apps now, which is nice. Huh. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll see you right here next week, right? Everybody going to be here again next week? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. So we make a date of it? I'll send you a calendar invite. Nice. <laughs> send me an ICS file. No, like, what do you call it? ICS file, yeah. <laughs> Schedule Plus. Some <laughs> somebody once uh, said, well, I'll, I'll send you an Outlook. And I said, yeah, well, that's not going to do me any good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm yeah. on the old outlook.com, but thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye.